In this video, you're going to learn to find the equation of a tangent line to a curve. And not only is this a very common calculus technique, tends to be one of the first applications of derivatives that students learn, but it's also a historically important problem. This is the problem that mathematicians were working on, like several hundred years ago, when calculus was first being developed. But don't worry, we're not going to get into a history lesson today, we're just going to learn how this technique works. So it's not a difficult technique, it's not a big technique, but we do require a little bit of theory before we can tackle these problems, so let's start by looking at that first. So the scenario here is that we've got some kind of curve, and the curve might be given to you in a diagram, or more commonly, the curve will just be expressed in an algebraic form. Diagrams are helpful though, they help set the context. So let's say we've got some curve, which I'm just going to make up. Let's make it some kind of parabolic type curve like this. This would be the graph of the function f of x, so y equals f of x. And we've got a point of tangency, so a point where our tangent line is just going to touch the curve, just at that one single point. Remember, that is the definition of a tangent line. It touches the curve just at one single point. So in this case, our tangent line would be going something like this. And it's the equation of this tangent line that we're trying to find. And the first thing about these questions, which is super important, is that a tangent line is a line. And lines are always found using the strategy that we use for finding straight lines, which is to use the formula y minus b equals mx minus a. So this is kind of our starting point, knowing that this is a formula that ultimately we're going to use to tackle all of these problems means that really we just need to track down the things that go into that formula. The things that go into this formula are the m value, which remember is the gradient, and the point AB, which is any point on the curve, or I should say on the curve and the line. In fact, the point AB is going to be the point of tangency. So generally in these questions, a point of tangency is going to be given to you, maybe both the x and y coordinates, or in the case of these two examples, just the x coordinates, and then we have to find the y coordinate. So usually this is either given to you or you can find it quite easily. The main challenge with these questions and the main theory behind this technique is about the gradient. But remember, the gradient is just an example of a rate of change. It's a rate at which the y values change as the x values change, and a rate of change is just a derivative. So we're going to be finding our gradient not by using two points on the line, and doing the vertical over the horizontal, the gradient formula, we don't need to do that. We're doing calculus now. We only need one point. We're just going to find our gradient by using derivative. So in the case of an f of x function, we're going to take our function, differentiate it, and then we're going to sub in the value of the point that we're interested in. In other words, we're going to evaluate f prime a, and that is going to give us our gradient. So really, these questions boil down to, can you differentiate to then find the gradient? The algebra part at the end tends to be quite straightforward. So to be able to use this technique and to solve these problems, you have to have some experience of differentiation. And that could be all sorts of differentiations, so power rule, chain rule, or in this case, a trig function differentiation. So if you're not sure about any of that, then maybe check out those techniques first and then come back into this class when you're ready. So we're just going to go ahead now and work our examples to see how this theory plays out in reality. So just keep coming back to this point here. The point of these are the things that I need to solve this problem, to plug into that formula. So we can see here we've already got the point of tangency in this particular example. We just need to then go ahead and find our gradient. We're going to find our gradient via the derivative, so let's just start by differentiating. So this function is given as y, so we're going to express our derivative dy dx, and we're just using the power rule to get our derivative here. So multiply by the power, reduce the power by 1. So for the first term, 2x squared, the derivative is 4x. For the term x, the derivative is just 1, and when you differentiate a minus 3, that goes to 0, so that disappears. So this is our derivative. How do we turn that derivative into the gradient? Well, our gradient, which we're going to notate with a standard m, we just get by taking our derivative and substituting in the x-coordinate of the point of tangency. The x-coordinate here is 2, so we're subbing in the 2 to get 4 times 2 plus 1. So let me just write that. That's going to be 4 times 2 plus 1, which comes to 9. So now we've got the point 
of tangency, the two seven. We've now got our gradient as well. So we're basically, we're good to go. We just need to plug now those values into the straight line formula. Straight line formula is y minus b equals mx minus a. And now it's just algebra. So y minus, this is our b value, seven. So y minus seven equals a gradient m x minus the a value, which is two, like this, and then we're just gonna tidy up. So we get y minus seven equals nine x minus 18. And then just to put this into the final format, y equals nine x, I'm just gonna make some space here, nine x, add in seven to both sides, and we're gonna get minus 11. So that's quite a straightforward example, but a very typical example of how this technique goes and as the examples get more demanding with more demanding potentially more demanding functions the technique doesn't change it's just that we have to adapt our differentiation and maybe a little bit of the numeracy it might be more awkward okay so um, hopefully that helps just set the stage for how this theory is going to work out in practice let's just carry on with the next two examples just to show how as the functions change your working might change as well the first thing to note in this example, we've only got the x coordinate of the point of tangency, so we need to develop the y coordinate as well. Remember that f of x and y are interchangeable in this sense, so to find our y coordinate, we're just gonna be plugging the x value minus one into the formula, getting the f of x value, but the f of x value is the y value. So we're gonna get minus one cubed plus five times minus one, minus six, and then just taking your time to make sure you don't make a numerical mistake with these. So minus one cubed is minus one. This is minus five, minus six, and that all comes to negative 12. So that negative 12 is the y coordinate, goes with that x coordinate. So maybe just somewhere park that as a full coordinate on the page. So minus one, minus 12. So the minus one, minus 12 is playing the role of the AB. That's the point of tangency, that's where the curve touches, uh, or the tangent line touches the curve at that one single point. So now we need to make our gradient. So we're gonna do that by taking a derivative. This time we're using f notation. So we're gonna make our derivative as f prime of x. So f prime of x, just use whatever notation is appropriate for the problem. Using the power rule again, so x cubed differentiates to three x squared, five x differentiates to just five, and then the minus six disappears. So again, just doing the same thing, we're gonna turn this into our gradient just by taking the x coordinate of the point of tangency and subbing that into the derivative. The derivative is always a function, sometimes referred to as the gradient function, but once we sub in the number, it turns it into a numerical value, which is what we need for a gradient. Gradient should be a numerical value, not a function. So it starts off as a function, then we plug in a number and it becomes a numerical value, so three times x, which is minus one squared plus five. Minus one squared is one, so three times one is three plus five is eight, so our gradient is eight. So again, just going back to the original criteria, which is a gradient and a point, we've got a gradient, we've got a point, so we're good to go. And at this point, again, it's fairly trivial, we're just plugging into the y minus b formula, so this is our b value. It's gonna be a little careful here because it's y minus minus 12, which is gonna be a double negative. I'll just write that in for this line of working. And then we've got our gradient m, which is eight x minus minus one, because the a value is minus one like this. So watch out for double negatives are really common in this problem type. y minus minus 12, well that's y plus 12, eight bracket x minus minus one is a plus one like this and then just tidying up the algebra, which for calculus students should be easy enough. Expanding the bracket, eight x, eight times one is eight like this. And we get a final form of y equals eight x and then eight minus 12 is minus four. Okay, so a little bit more work involved in that one, primarily because they only give us the x value, the point of tangency, which is really common. In fact, it's probably more common than getting the full coordinate. You'll maybe see these if you're starting out in these problems, as you get a little further into them, they'll probably tend to be more like this. And then just, yeah, a little bit more numeracy required in this question. Okay, so these were both polynomial functions. This was a quadratic function. Uh, this is a cubic function. Let's take a look at something different. Um, in this case, a uh, trigonometric function. And these are fairly common as well. In fact, 
This technique could apply to any type of function, so don't worry about what the original function is. As long as you can differentiate it using some differentiation rule, then you're good to go and you're still going to use the same technique. Okay, so we've got our function. We've only got, again, the x coordinate of the point of tangency. We'll need to turn that into the corresponding y coordinate just by plugging into the formula. So y equals a cosine of pi by 6. So if you're not familiar with trigonometry to this level or radians, this is a radian measure, then that's something you might need to look into. Um, but basically pi by 6 is 30 degrees, cosine of uh, 30 degrees. I might just write that in here if you're not familiar with that. So that's the same as cosine of 30 degrees. You could use a calculator for that or you could do it non-calc using exact values or the unit circle and that comes out to be at root 3 over 2. So it's a bit of a strange looking full coordinate, uh, which is pi by 6 for the x and then root 3 over 2 for the, for the y. But if you think about trigonometric functions, they do have quite strange coordinates because if you take, for example, the graph of cosine, the graph of cosine goes something like this, and you've got a maximum value of 1, minimum value of minus 1, and then these angles going along the way are quite big numbers. So for example, that's a point which is at 90. Uh, this is a point here which is 180 degrees. So for example, that middle point has got a full coordinate of 180 degrees minus 1. So trigonometric function graphs do have weird coordinates anyway. So although this does look very weird, it's not that unusual for this type of function. So going back to our criteria, do we have everything we need? Well, we've got our point of tangency, which is good. We're halfway there. We don't have our gradient. We're going to need to find the gradient by taking the derivative. So you might be familiar with these, you might not, but basically cosine differentiates to negative sine. If that's not something you've done before, then you can either look that up in a table of uh, differentiation values, or you'll just learn that over time. So the derivative is minus sine x. Okay, and then uh, just, if you're not familiar with these and just out of interest, if the original function was sine, then the derivative of sine is positive cosine. So sine goes to positive cosine under differentiation and cosine goes to negative sine. So we want to turn this into our gradient. So our m value is going to be minus the sine of the x coordinate of our point of tangency. So minus the sine of pi by six, which again, pi by six is a radian measure equivalent to 30 degrees. This is minus the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is one half. Um, so this comes out to be minus one half. So at this point, we've got everything we need. We've got a gradient, we've got a point on the line, the point of tangency, and we can just go ahead and plug these into our equation. So it looks a little weird plugging into the straight line equation when you've got these strange numbers, but you've just got to do the same thing. Like even if the numbers look a little weird, this is our A value. That's our b value, so we're doing y minus b, which is y minus root 3 over 2 equals the m value, which is minus 1 half x minus the a value, which is pi by 6, like this. Once you've done a few of these trig examples with trigonometric functions, you'll start to get used to these more uh, bizarre looking forms. So this one is a little bit more awkward to figure out the end algebra. Notice that we've got fractions here. We could make life a little easier on ourselves by multiplying through the equation to get rid of the fraction. Let's do that, especially since these both have a denominator of two. So if we multiply every term by two, that will get rid of that problem. So two times y is two y. Multiplying this fraction by two just leaves the numerator root three. Multiplying the minus one half by two just gives us minus one. You don't need to multiply the bracket by two because multiplying the half by two, which is already part of the bracket, already multiplies the bracket. If we now multiply these by two themselves, then we'll actually have multiplied them by four. So we don't need to do anything with the bracket. It's already been multiplied. But that's a really common mistake. Be careful with that in, in general. Okay, so this sign gives us 2y minus root 3. We're multiplying the minus 1. This is effectively a minus 1 into the bracket. So we get minus 1x or just minus x. A double negative here to give us a plus pi by 6 like that. And then we're trying to get it into this more familiar straight line form, which needs the y to be on the left hand side or on one side of the equation. So let's just start to build towards that. So we get 2y equals 
minus x plus pi by 6, and then I'm just going to move the minus root 3 to the other side to make it a plus root 3 like that. And then we're going to divide everything by 2, so we get y equals minus 1 half x. And then it depends how you want to do this. You could write this in different ways, but dividing pi by 6 by 2 gives us pi by 12, and then dividing root 3 by 2 just gives us root 3 over 2. So the usual form is y equals mx plus or minus some number on the end. So here we've got y equals mx plus, and you could just consider basically all of that to be the number on the end, even put it in a bracket if you like, just to make it seem like it's still in the correct usual format. So just a different type of example there, but still working through the same steps. We still had to get to the point where we had the point of tangency, the full coordinates, A and B, and then also to develop our uh, derivative to then make the gradient. And then the, the end part is just algebra. The part at the end will be determined by how difficult the numbers are. In this case, quite straightforward, a little bit tougher here, and then just a little bit weird, to be honest, with this one over here. Okay, so like I said earlier, very, very common calculus technique, and not only just when you're starting out in differential calculus, but you tend to see these all the way through calculus one, calculus two, and in other courses as well. It's just a really, really common thing to do, to put a tangent line on a curve and to need to find the equation or the gradient of that tangent line. So it's a really useful technique to get good at, and especially with different types of uh, function. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions about this video or comments, please just leave them in the box below.